Hey everybody and a warm welcome back to our channel at Brew Crabs with me, your host, Brew Crabs. Are you curious about the best way to fund your new home purchase? Wondering how to identify the right lender? Maybe curious to hear the latest buzz from both buyers and sellers in the real estate market? Today, as we continue to explore the world of real estate on YouTube in our professional spotlight series, we're diving deep into the lending aspect of, of things, providing insight into these topics and beyond. If you have any questions as we go throughout the video, whether they're for myself or my guest Davis, don't hesitate to drop them in the comment section below. We're eager to address your inquiries. Moreover, if you're seeking a more personalized discussion, uh, we're just a message away, so you can reach out to us anytime by call or text. Uh, we're here to engage in a detailed conversation to offer you the clarity that you are looking for. Hey, I'm thrilled to have Davis Land with Prosperity Mortgage with us. He's here to guide us through the essential details you should be aware of and share his market insights on what's currently going on out there. Davis, it is a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, good morning, Brew. Thank you so much for inviting me. I look forward to uh, chatting about the mortgage world and also a little about uh, about real estate as well. <laughs> well, Davis, tell me a little bit about uh, yourself, your position with your company, who you're with, that kind of stuff, so everybody knows who you are. Yep, so I've been in the mortgage business for about 22 years now. I started with a small kind of mom and pop broker shop, uh, loved working there, and then they sold to the big bank and left there. I've kind of bounced around just a little bit, not much, but I've worked for the big banks. I've worked for some small banks, some community banks and also some mortgage lenders. What I work for now is a correspondent lender, which is Prosperity Home Mortgage. We are uh, nationwide and, uh, you know, what we do is we um, process and underwrite all loans in our name and then sell them on the secondary market. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, let's dive right into the burning questions. Everybody's got about securing financing for their new home or financing their existing one. And I'm gonna be delivering these in quick succession. So those of you that are out there watching, make sure that you stick with us to the end to catch every detail, including the current thoughts of what we're hearing from buyers and sellers out there in the real estate market. Davis, you told us a little bit about your credentials. So let's just jump right in and ask about loan options. What types of loans do you offer and which are most suitable for different buyers? You know, like your first time home buyer, or is there one that's better for investors, that kind of stuff? Yeah, so we offer anything conventional, FHA, VA, or jumbo. Uh, your FHA is gonna be more for your first time home buyer that has little to no down payment. You can also piggyback that with a down payment assistance program such as uh, Georgia Dream. So we have options for almost 100% financing uh, with a down payment assistance. Conventional financing, uh, first time home buyers can put down as little as 3%. That's your Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Um, and then if you're a repeat purchaser, you have to put down 5%. Uh, the conventional loan limits in Georgia are 750,000. Wow. So up to 750 K these days, which it's, it's jumped tremendously in the last probably 10 years, which is great. Um, and, uh, your jumbo loans are for over 750 K and that re usually requires a little bit more down payment, but there are options for lower down payments up to about a million dollars. Um, okay. Your investor loans, uh, they're a little more difficult these days, uh, require about require at least 20% down. Uh, there is a huge difference between 20% down and 25% down when it comes to rates. So I always tell those investors that are looking to buy rental properties, if they can come with that extra 5%, you're gonna save about a half a percent in interest rate that way. Wow, that's great. That's great to know because interest rates are always on everybody's mind, right? And what is the loan cost? Uh, which is really, really kind of brings me to my next question. How do you source your interest rates and, and what fees do your clients typically pay when they're, when they're originating a loan? Yeah, so that can be a moving target, but basically we charge a processing and an underwriting fee, totals to about $12.99. Um, and then depending on when you lock in, you can also pay discount points or an, ori or an origination fee, one of the same, um, to buy down that interest rate. Uh, not a lot of people are buying down interest rates right now just because they're hoping for a refinance down the road. So they're saving their cash for that potential refinance. Um, but yeah, if you're if you're planning on staying in your property for a long time and, and you don't feel like that rates are going to drop, it might interest you to buy down that rate. So a rate that buy down plus any just basic origination closing costs, and that's the basic fees. How do you guys source your rates for your loans? I mean, yeah, so that's a, that's a great question. What we do for our conventional, which is our Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, our FHA and VA, those are published every day at about 1030 in the morning. And that's the rates we go off of. Those are published by our company. 
Uh, Jumbo is a little different because we actually can see each and every investor that we have for Jumbo. So we have investors that might be better for a 30 year fix versus a 15 year or, you know, lower down payment, a higher down payment. So we can actually source those through that investor. And also with underwriting guidelines per investor, you know, we have to make sure that they fit in that box when we price it out as well. So we have about 20, prob probably around 20 different jumbo investors that we work directly with. And with those jumbos, jumbos, you can go a little bit outside the box from your normal, like regular bank through the loans that are federally backed, that kind of Correct. Stuff. Yeah. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have their own guidelines uh fha and, and va as well so you have to fall into those guidelines with jumbo you can have some investors that'll work a little differently uh you know we have some asset-based jumbo investors so you know for your self-employed borrower that uh that doesn't like to uh pay as much to uncle sam as is everybody else you know that writes off a little bit more um we have some asset-based programs some bank statement programs stuff like that through our jumbo line of well, that's great to know, especially for our higher end buyers, because that's typically what they're doing, right? They're self-employed persons who are writing off stuff. They may not have a lot of income, but they have a lot of assets. And that's a great program to be able to get them into the homes that they want, because they're really the lower risk category as far as you guys are considered with the amount of equity and stuff that they put down in those large properties. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it'll require a little more down payment, but it gets them in the property. And, and usually they're OK with more down payment. They just have to uh, figure out the income part of it. Right, right, right. So tell me, what is your process for pre-approval? Do y'all, I mean, I guess we probably should talk about pre-qualification and pre-approval. Yeah. Uh, two different things. Well, why don't we talk about those first? Yeah, I, I actually, we have three steps at Prosperity. So so the pre-qualification is, is filling out an application online, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes. I get the information, I pull credit, I take a look at the application. I can have a pre-qualification uh, pre-qualification letter without out within minutes um, of that. Now I'm not I'm not checking any documentation to make sure everything's adding up. Um, that's the next step, which is your pre-approval, where I'll ask for W-2s, pay stubs, bank statements, driver's license to make sure that all adds up. And then that's when I can send out that pre-approval letter. That can usually take about 24 hours, depending on how quick I can get the documentation back. But the pre-qual can, you know, that can be instantaneous so i mean it, it it happens very quickly as soon as i get that application over brew i even like to take it a step farther than that and go through the full approval process and the reason i like that is we've you know we've, we're still in a competitive market there's not a ton of inventory out there so you want your offer to stand out well with an approval we go through underwriting i make sure my underwriter reviews everything everything's adds up and we actually have a approval on a underwriter signature so that's huge in this market um and it, you know it just makes everybody a little more comfortable when you're making an offer on a listing that listing agent sees that full approval. Also, it cuts down on turn times if you need to close a little quicker and just streamlines the process. Well, I agree. I know from a lender's, a realtor's perspective, it's certainly better for us to have the full approval because we can go in, even though, I mean, we're still looking at a seller's market, whether people realize it or not, because we've only got 3.38 months worth of inventory. You know, our average days on the market is 19 days and our list of sale price is 98.3% uh, of the list, list of sale price. So they're still selling pretty quickly for the, you know, for pretty much what the list price is. Now we do have about 69% more inventory than we did year over year in right. month supply, but we're still very much still on the seller side. We typically call six months the break even point. I assume that's what you guys kind of look at too on your side is the six month sure. mark. Um, so yeah, especially when you're out there and you are in properties that are competitive, especially those single family homes, uh, even more so than townhomes and condominiums, because those are the ones that everybody's clamoring for with their lots. You want to make sure that you are fully, fully, fully approved uh, because you can beat out another person's offer because they may say, well, you know, these people might not be able to do it, but I know this person's got the money, right? Right, right. It's very beneficial. It's, so almost, tell me same as, it, it's almost same as cash brew. I mean, it, it really comes down to if you're full, fully approved, you really are same as cash. So you can, you can do no finance contingency. Um, you can, we can get appraisals back in, in less than seven days. If we need an appraisal, sometimes we can get an appraisal waiver if they're putting 20% down or more. So really you can just streamline the process. And, and it, it, you know what, uh, I've always noticed with buyers that have already gone through the approval process, it, it, they, they stress out less because 
they're just waiting on the closing at that point. And they also don't have to freak out the day after you get the property under contract, figure out the inspection, and then get all their documents together, and then get them over, and then get more documents over. They don't they don't have to do all that stuff. It does make it easier. It makes it easier and less stressful for everybody. So let's kind of take the middle ground there. Let's say they do the medium qualification. Sure. What is your uh, application closing time? Let's say from the time they go under contract and send you the application. Yeah, so it, you know that a lot depends on the borrower. But if we're talking an A paper W two borrower, I mean, we can close. I closed one uh, about a month ago. It took about ten days. Um, now that was rushing it through because we had to had to work it that way. Um, you know, most of the time you're going to see on contracts a thirty day close, uh, mm -hmm. and that's plenty of time for us. Um, you know, back in the heyday when. Uh, when we were writing a lot more mortgages, you know, we, we were asking for more time. But right now, I mean, you know, I if I go to my underwriting team and say I need something closed in 14 calendar days, they're going to make it happen. Sure. Um, and, and that's the great part about working for a mortgage company is that's what we specialize in. What would that time frame be if they're fully that they had the fully underwriting done? Yeah, fully underwrite. We can. I mean, I, I had one where we got an appraisal waiver through Fannie Mae uh it was fully underwritten we got title back rushed it we closed in seven calendar days that's fast that's a fast yeah. i mean that is yeah. just the same as cash because that's about as fast you can get the title work done correct right. yeah i mean that that was really our concern is how fast we could get title but we went through uh wiseman and wiseman was very uh helpful in in expediting that title request so, and you work with a lot of us realtors as well um how do you kind of keep the clients and the realtors informed as you go along through the process yeah, so I've been sitting in real estate offices probably for the last 10 to 12 years. So I know the importance of, of being in contact with the realtors at all times, listing agents, uh, you know, even the sellers if I need to. Um, you know, we have an automated system that's great at, uh, at Prosperity. So anytime we go through, you know, get approval through underwriting, the appraisal comes back, an automated uh, email goes out to all parties. But I'm also going to do it myself as well, just to make sure they don't skip over that automated. It could it could end up in a junk file uh, or a spam email. So I often reach out as well. Um, I always reach out when we get under contract to the listing agent with just a quick intro. Uh, most agents these days, not all, but have a closing coordinator it, that helps as well because they stay on top of things and keep me in line with timelines as well. So, you know, just an open line of communication is very important. The, the less people worry, the better. So I always try to try to beat them to worrying. All right. Well, that, that is that is that's very important to beat them to worrying. And that kind of brings me to my next thing is difficult customers. You know, let's say, for example, you have a customer is maybe he's a little bit paranoid. He uh once he gets confused with the numbers he's looking at three different lenders you know how do you handle that particular client so that he understands and doesn't get frustrated and you know slam down the phone and run out the door yeah so you know it just you just got to really understand your client i mean you you know it as well as i do bro we've we've had some in the past that uh that we have to handhold but uh you know usually what happens with a client that is is searching around and uh looking at uh, different lenders I just try to sit sit them down and say, hey, let me look at the uh, the quote from the other lender. And if it's not something I can beat or match, then I'm gonna tell them they're getting a great deal and move forward with that, uh, that lender. I'm also gonna give them advice on whether or not that lender is gonna close on time. You know, a lot of times you you find the online guys that are that are amazing and uh but they are online for a reason you know you're not gonna you're gonna call into a call center it, it makes things a little more difficult so you know i i'm up front and honest with clients uh if it's not something i can compete with i tell them hey you're getting a great deal go for it um and if they ever need anything down the road or something falls out please give me a call back and we'll go from there i completely agree with that honesty is always the best policy isn't it yeah, <laughs> it sure. always wins it yeah. always wins one right. way or another. um all right, we talked a little bit about down payments already, so I'm going to jump right into lock-in rates. How does your rate process, or rate lock process, work, and what happens if the closing is delayed? Yeah, so usually we lock on 30, 45, or 60 day locks. That's kind of your your standard days of locks. Now you can have extended locks, 90, 120 days, 
uh, that costs a little bit of money to lock in that way. And your interest rate's gonna be a little higher the longer you uh, lock in. So you just gotta be aware of that as well. Um, you know, I just, I put it out there, you know, if I if I feel like there might be a, a new build and, and we all know those get delayed a little bit, um, and they tell me it's a 30 day close. We, we, we know it's going to be 30 days. I usually lock in for 60. Um, right. The pricing might not be any different. So it might be the same exact rate um, and no extra closing costs. So why not do that? I have one right now that, you know, they were, they were telling them it's within 30 days. We locked in for 60. Now they're saying it's about 35 days. So, you know, I always build that in. Now, also if, um, if, if, if a rate gets, I mean, if a uh, closing gets delayed, we can definitely look at extending that at no cost to the borrower, just depending on what's going on in the market. Now, if rates have jumped up tremendously between the lock and when we need to extend, it might cost a few dollars as well, but we always try to work with that borrower to, to, to make it easy on them. That, that's that's very helpful to know because I know that a lot of people do get in that situation. So here's really one like the million dollar questions. What do you see? What are you seeing out there in the marketplace? What I mean, what's in the minds of the buyers? Are sellers paying tons of closing costs? Uh, are they doing buy downs? What are their perspectives? What are, what are their realities? Sure. Yeah. So from a listing side, what I am seeing is if properties have sat for a little while, they're entertaining a a buy down option so instead of uh, paying closing costs they might pay for the 2-1 buy down i just closed a couple this past month with a 2-1 buy down it cost the seller about eleven thousand uh, dollars it bought down that interest rate for the uh, buyer two points for the first year and one point for year two hoping that in the next couple of years, there will be a refinance. So you're seeing that a little bit more, you know, it's all strategy. You know, if your house is, if you're just listing your property and it's been on the market for a day or two, they're not really doing anything, but if it's been on there for 30 days, they're, they're coming up with a good strategy between um, the, their agent and the loan officer to try to figure out a best way to get that sold. Um, from the buy side, you know, I, I think it all goes back to interest rate. I mean, hey, you know, we, we were very spoiled for many, many years when you're talking high twos and low threes when it comes to interest rates. Um, you know, I do think we are at a, a new norm. Um, I don't feel like we're going to ever see unless something crazy happens like a new pandemic or something like that that will be down in the low threes again. It just doesn't support a healthy market. Um, so, you know, bank, banks have hard time when you're when you're loaning, loaning money at 3% interest. Um, so, you know, what forecasters are saying, uh, take it for what it's worth. Um, they're saying we might see a little pullback towards the end of next year, maybe second half of the year when it comes to interest rates. You know, I often say though, it's, it's a good time to buy. I mean, hey, if rates go down, you refinance. If rates go up, you're in a good position. So, you know, don't hold off just over interest rates. I mean, interest rates right now for mortgages are a lot lower than credit cards. Um, so, you know, we're still in good position. I mean, if you look over the last 50 something years, I mean, we're we're in the middle of where they could be. So. You're right. I mean, I bought my first house in 1996 at 8.6%. I didn't even think twice about it. I mean, in fact, those rates were really cheap because they were like in the teens and 20s in the 1970s and 80s. A lot of folks don't remember that. But then we got those artificial rates after the market collapsed. Um, and the government basically propped up the real estate market to get get stuff to build again. And, and you're right. This is a healthy place that we're at. Um, people will have to get used to it, I believe. Um, I believe I, my personal opinion is we might see them pop up just a little bit more over the next year before they go back down. I don't know. Correct. I mean, yeah, I, I think that's what you'll see. They'll stay where they are, maybe a little higher. And then towards the end of next year, we'll start to see them dip down a little bit. It is an election year, uh, uh, you know, historically during the second half of a, of a uh, election year, you'll start to see rates dip. Um, but you, you just don't know. I, I mean, again, I, I, you know, there's that, that saying it's, it's, it's marry the house, date the rate, um, you know, so uh, well, just be prepared if I, you know, my kind of golden rule, there's two things I think of when, it, when it comes to refinances is, um, you know, 1%. So if, if you lock in today at seven and a half and, and this time next year, they're at six and a half, it, it's, it's a good time to look into a refinance. And even the slam dunk, I think, would be as if you could potentially 
lock in today on a 30 year at seven and a half and rates drop and the 15 year becomes very competitive and you can lock in on that 15 year at a similar payment or a little more paying it off in half the time there's a slam dunk because you're saving a ton of money over uh the life of the term and interest well and also if you're if the rate is so much more of a concern you might want to look at some of those homes that have been on the market for 30 or 45 days where the sellers are more motivated and they might be willing to pay those buy down costs for you until you get to the point where you can refinance down at two percent or down two percent or whatever it will ends up being and you'll put you know it'd be a great deal all the way around so you know you, that might be a great opportunity to take advantage of some of those sellers who are who are ready to move their homes and you know ready to make some make some concessions for uh, sure. I mean, obviously like you say right off the right off the front it doesn't usually happen because everybody thinks they're gonna they're gonna win big and then they the reality hits in if they are overpriced or they've got some issue with their home um david is there anything else that you'd like to add for us today yeah i mean i thank you so much for having me uh it's been a it's been a great morning you know i, I again i'm going to go back to the fact that you know we're still in a good market to purchase um you know i'd rather have a little bit higher interest rate on my mortgage than overpay for a property uh you know think about a year and a half two years ago everybody's paying 125 percent of what the sales price is um you know then you go to sell and it, and it's not there anymore whereas interest is tax deductible uh, on primary residences so you know you're getting that benefit as well uh, I, I really do think it's a great time to buy. Um, you're you're putting your money into a savings account with a home. Uh, um, you know, it's it's going into a principal balance. So you're you know in the Atlanta area in Georgia, you know more than likely you're going to get that back out when you go to sell down the road. Well, and you made an excellent point. People just a year ago were paying like fifty thousand dollars over the list price on a five hundred thousand dollar home. I mean, they were paying ten percent upfront right there. Bam. But today they're not as interested in paying a seven and a half percent mortgage, which is way less right. money, and it's not all up front, and you actually still have it. Uh, and, so and you had to worry about the appraisal. I mean, I remember I had one that was a uh, seven hundred thousand dollars sales price. They got it under contract for seven fifty. Uh, appraisal came in at seven hundred. They had to pay the appraisal gap. So mm -hmm. I mean, you you run into that a lot um, yeah. because. The appraisers can see that the property was listed at 700. Yeah, they're not going to stop just to stop, but they feel like they've gotten to the point that they should and they can, you know, kind of warrant that $700,000 appraised value. So, um, you know, I, I, I like I said, Brew, I think it's a great time to buy. I think, um, you know, you just got to think that this interest rate that you lock in now will be temporary um hopefully for the next year or two max yeah great well davis that is a lot of great information i really appreciate it thank you so much for being here today giving us some insight into what it is that you do uh in the lending business well thanks again brew for having me and i uh look forward to doing this again soon Yes, sir. Thank you. And as always, if you do have any questions out there, those who are watching, be sure that you comment those in the comment section below the video. We'd be more than happy to get to the answers or reach out to Davis or myself directly if you have questions about financing or real estate. We're here to help you in every way. We're very happy to do so. Our numbers will also be in the description of the videos as well as the ones that showed up here on the screen today. And as always, if you did find this video valuable, consider giving it a like and sharing it with your friends. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to our channel and clicking that little bell button to be notified when those new videos come out. We'd really love for you to do that as well. We've got some great content coming out all the time and you don't want to miss a single thing. Thank you again so much for joining us today. I am so glad that you were able to be here. And if you did like this video, I know you're going to love the next one that pops up on your screen.